we are across the pond, uh, province of Somerset, United Kingdom. Brother Shay Aziz, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me, Worshipful Brother Cameron. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. So before we go any further, could you let us know uh, uh, which lodge or lodges you are from? Uh, so I'm actually a part of three craft lodges. Uh, my mother lodge is the Lodge of Honor, number 379 in Bath. Uh, I'm also a member of Priory Lodge, number 6,913 in Keynesham. And I'm also a member of a London Lodge, a Lodge Sine Nomine, number 10,000, which is actually administered directly by UGLE instead of any provincial or district level management. Now, I'm, I'm speaking with you because I, uh, and I recommend all Masons do this, I received the province of Somerset there, from England, their electronic newsletter, which by the way, uh, any Masons out there, so many Grand Lodge jurisdictions or in the case of England and you know provinces and those jurisdictions, even individual lodges, you know, in many cases produce monthly or weekly newsletters or e-blasts, you know, and it's a great way if you're a Mason, it's free, you know, to go on the websites and sign up for them. And then, you know, every month you'll get, uh, at least every month, so there's more, you'll get a newsletter from, you know, I, I'm signed up to Grand Lodge of Idaho, Grand Lodge of Minnesota, Somerset, Dorset. And you know, it's a great way to keep up with what's happening with Freemasonry around the world and also get ideas for your lodge um, or that you can bring to your lodge of things you can do. Um, so if you get the chance, sign up for them because they're, they're a very good resource. And in the case of Somerset, when I received the, the newsletter, the Eat Last, I learned of work that you guys are doing in relation to supporting the people of Ukraine through uh, United Grand Lodge of England's efforts, UGLE. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about that, what you know, your province is doing specifically to support the people of Ukraine during, uh, you know, during what is obviously an incredibly challenging time for, for the people of Ukraine. Absolutely. So um, basically this all started a couple of months ago, obviously with the violence and the war in Ukraine. Uh, UGLE and the Masonic Charitable Foundation, to their credit, are actually usually incredibly quick to react to such world events. There's been earthquakes in Haiti, hurricanes in the Bahamas, disasters in the Philippines that they've also responded to. The latest one we're responding to now, obviously, is the Ukrainian relief effort. Uh, UGLE and the Masonic Charitable Foundation, basically, within a, a few weeks of the war starting, started a mass uh, mass donation collection uh, project that was supposed to raise ideally 25,000 pounds in a couple of weeks. And that was two months ago. And I can tell you that in the province of Somerset alone, not counting all the other provinces in England and Wales and all the other districts that are helping us out, in Somerset alone, we raised 25,000 pounds for them. So they've actually, after two months, been able to collect 870,000 pounds to donate to the British Red Cross for the Ukrainian relief effort. Now, how does the actual, like the mechanics of it um, work? So does each province have like a designated representative who, um, you know, organizes and collects the donations and then sends it to, to UGLE? Or how does the actual, how does the province go about fundraising? It's actually, it's, it's, it, there's many uh, different ways. So there's actually an online link that anyone can go to, Mason or non-Mason. That link has been shared on social media, email, websites, newsletters, physical mail, every which way we can send that out. It's been sent out. It's been sent out to provincial grant secretaries to send out to all their law secretaries. It's been decimated to all the members. It's been shared with all the members' networks. We're posting it all the time on our provincial social media pages. 
Uh, there's uh, QR codes you can scan that'll take you directly to the donation page. There's emails that tell you exactly what URL to go to. There's bank codes if you don't like doing online or any of this stuff and you prefer to just call or do a wire transfer to your bank. Any which way that it's possible to collect money for this endeavor, that is how we are doing it. And why do you think um, Masons, well, actually, you mentioned, you know, anybody can donate. Are you seeing a lot of support coming in from outside of, um, you know, UGLA or outside of, of England? Are you getting support from brothers, to your, to your knowledge, or are you getting support from brothers outside of your jurisdiction or people just outside the jurisdiction in general? I know there's a lot of people who are not just, you know, they're not just members of Freemasons, they're members of other organizations, maybe their golf club or they're a member of the Odd Brothers or another fraternal organization or another charitable institution like that. So we're actually getting a lot of non-members. So it's mostly do Mason donations, but we are getting a not insignificant proportion of donations coming from friends and family of Masons who just, they, they wanted to help. They didn't know how exactly to help, but because UGLE and the MCF got their boots on the ground very quickly to establish, you know, reliable partners to pass the relief uh, down the chain to, we were able to say, hey, if you want to help out, here's what we're doing as Freemasons if you want to support us. And there was a lot of positive reactions to that. And why do you think, um, or I'm trying to think of the right, right way to, to put it, what do you think it, it, it is about the situation in Ukraine that, um, that pop is not the right word, I guess, yeah, that, that, made your, that, that made Masons and non-Masons want to respond so much and made your, your fundraising efforts so successful? You know, you've talked about how the goal was 25,000 and that, you know, you, you, uh, uh, fundraise that just in your own province. Uh, so what is it you think about this situation that has made Masons and non-Masons respond in such a generous way and, and want to support the people of Ukraine? Um, I, th I think that the, the best way to answer that is it's, it's a lot of different factors. I mean, for a lot of people, especially here in England, Ukraine's not that far away. A lot of people who live here regularly go to Ukraine. I've been to Ukraine several times. It's a, it's a fun place to go before all of this started. It was a safe place to go. It was a very enjoyable experience. Um, also, I mean, there's, you know, echoes of previous worldwide conflicts that I think always put people a little on edge. And people always, I think in the, I think the base factor is probably just when humanity is suffering, I think it brings out the best in the rest of humanity, you want to help those who are less fortunate than yourselves, because there's, you know, probably you know, some human empathy, you know, you know, moral obligations, religious obligations, there's so many different factors that can contribute to that. And, you know, you mentioned it before, and I'll throw a link down in the description, but if anybody, Mason or non-Mason, wants to support UGLE's efforts, um, you know, and, and support the of Ukraine. What's the link? Where do they go to? Uh, I, I'll just, uh, I can pull it up right now. I had it open two seconds ago, but I also have 60 million tabs open, so. Once you open a tab, it just stays open. It never closes. That's what I have uh, my computer. Yeah, the problem is I have multiple, there we go, the Sonic Charitable Foundation. Uh, I can actually just send you the link if that's easier. I'm not going to bother reading out a whole URL here. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but basically, go to the uh, Masonic Charitable Foundation's website, and it's it's very easy to find. Masonic Charitable Foundation MCF, like it's uh, the main website is mcf.org.uk. Just scroll down, you'll find the Ukrainian Relief Fund right there. Perfect, and I'll leave a link to that in the description so everybody will get the chance to. Uh, and you're watching this, click on the link, check it out. And you know, this is just one of many examples of charitable efforts um, organized or facilitated by UGLE, by lodges. You know, I talked to, whoa, I talked to Dorset, uh, uh, the Dorset charity steward. 
Um, I'll leave a link to the script to his video. It, you know, it seems like charity is such an important part of the Masonic, for everybody, such an important part of the Masonic journey and Masonic teachings. What I'm really impressed with when it comes to UGLE and the provinces is the trying to think of the right word, the the organization that goes into it, right? Like there's a lot of, of thought about how to best organize and make sure funds get to where they need to go. What has been your kind of responsibilities in terms of, of either the U, U, Ukrainian relief efforts or just in general, you know, your work in terms of assisting with these charitable endeavors? Uh, great question. Uh, actually, as a part of like, uh, as a Freemason, I help out the province of Somerset's uh, IT and communications team with their social media channels. So primarily all the Somerset Freemasons, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter platforms, I tend to handle that for them. Uh, what I tend to do is make sure all the information that UGLE and specifically the Masonic Charitable Foundation are putting out gets to its members because we all get the emails, but not everyone is always reading all their emails all the time. Some emails slip through the cracks. It's very easy to forget that you got an email, even if you did read it. And part of what I do on social media is just like constantly putting out reminders. Hey guys, we're doing, don't forget to donate to the relief fund. Hey, this lodge gave a check to this charitable institution for this much money. And they're doing this for the community with that money. If you have more submissions, let us know. But, and, you know, and we keep on collecting all these stories from across the province. I think it's one thing that's really good about Freemasonry, especially in the province of Somerset, is you don't have to do a lot of work to get us to start donating. Um, it, we're, as an institution, yes, we're very charitable, but as individual members, I've found we're also incredibly incredibly charitable people. We like to always, there's always something going on. I mean, even right now as we speak, there's, we're on day three of a four day bike ride. Uh, the Somerset Masonic Cycling Association is uh, doing a tour de temples, which is basically a play on tour de France. They're doing a four day, 260 mile bike ride to visit all 28 Masonic temples in the province of Somerset. And they're raising funds along the way at each lodge that they're at each temple they're going to, they're picking up checks to raise money for the charities they're riding for. Uh, we're also obviously doing the Ukrainian Relief Fund. Like I said, there was very, very there was very little effort on uh, the organization's part to get the donations to start uh, coming in. I'm I'm in marketing, so as a general rule, I know if you're trying to collect a huge sum of money, especially something like eight hundred seventy thousand pounds, it takes weeks and months, and you have to do a series of uh advertisements you have to approach it from several different angles there's like a huge series of events you have to do to try and collect huge sums of money all the masonic charitable foundation had to do and all ugle had to do for somerset and everyone else to start working on this was send out an email it was one single email and everyone got it and everyone was like okay what are we going to do how do we get this money raised uh worshipful masters started hosting raffles uh, wives of Masons started doing bake sales, children of Masons started selling cards, brothers started doing sponsored walks, bike rides, even garage sales, everything you can think of. Members started trying to do almost immediately to raise the money for no, just because the call came out and that's what Freemasons do, right? We answer the call, especially when it's a charitable call. So you mentioned your, you know, your work with social media and with mm -hmm making sure the information gets out there. Um, so then what are some of the, 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 the social media sites that you're primarily posting on and, and that you're getting responses from, from Masons on? Um, our most interactive pages are Facebook and Twitter. Uh, there's a, obviously Facebook being the most universal social platform. It's also typically our first point of contact for uh, potential Masons who don't have anyone in the family or their friend network who can recommend them to a Masonic Connect to start the process, they typically reach out to us through Facebook or Twitter. Like it'll usually be a DM being, hey, my name is this, I live here, I'm interested in joining, can someone help me? And then that's when someone will take that message, they'll send them the Somerset website, we have all the information there, the uh, information forms, all the contact form uh, information, all that stuff basically gets sent to them very quickly. 
and then they can take the step from there. And you know, I I I like what you what you had, had said as a, as a secretary. I felt your pain, um, right? Not everybody, because we're so inundated. I think, especially since the pandemic, we're so inundated with online life with Zoom with all the rest of it. You know, emails. It's easy for email to get lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the importance of needing other forms and other sources of communication to let brethren know about these whatever the charitable event is tour to temple mm -hmm. ukrainian relief efforts you know it, it's so important to have social media a social media component and it does seem i don't know if you can how much you can speak for for ugle but a lot of interviews i've done recently uh a, a lot of Masons have expressed a lot of admiration for some of the work done by UGLE over the last several years in having a more active social media branch and being more active mm -hmm. on Twitter and Facebook. I guess, you know, as a UGLE Mason, what are your thoughts on either your work or the work done at UGLE level to engage with social media and to be more active on the virtual spaces? Honestly, I think UGLE is doing a great job, uh, the, especially in the last couple of years. You've correctly noted uh, we've uh, our uh, current uh, Grand Secretary at UGLE, Dr. David Staples, has done his utmost best to transform UGLE from an organization that typically didn't respond to comments or allegations in print media or on social media. Oh, it's adorable. Uh, and... Uh, he's transformed into a very proactive organization and we now are interacting more on social media. We are interacting more with our local media and our local communities as well. Uh, the, the communications director as well, uh, Sean Butler at UGLE, when he got into his post, he made a diligent effort to speak to everyone in the province about their social media specifically and like what they could do to improve it or what they could do to enhance it, to better interact with uh, the you know other intermediaries on social media, the one crowning thing in my personal opinion was uh, for the last year they were doing the national digital marketing campaign, which is basically a nationwide digital ad on primarily social media for prospective and potential Masons to find out more about Freemasonry and register their interest. UGLE then found out who they were, where they were, and then sent them to the relevant province to get sorted and introduced to a, a good fit, a good fitting lodge. So that was something that they did was amazing. We had amazing results. I know we personally, in my lodge, we initiated two guys who came from the national digital marketing campaign in another lodge. We did three I, and everywhere I'm going I, I, more often than not, when I'm asking, Oh, how did you guys find this guy? They're saying, Oh, he actually approached us through UGLE. So yeah, they've done amazing work in the last couple of years, being very proactive on social media, very proactive with the media in general, and making sure that there's people know what we're actually about. It's brotherly love, it's relief, it's truth, it's charity, and it's it's a good time. It is all of those things, and you know, especially emphasizing this conversation, it is about charity and in this case in particular, you know, the work done to support. Um, the people of Ukraine. So once again, that link is in the description. Um, if you, Mason or not Mason, want to support UGLE's efforts, um, you know, or maybe you want to take it to your lodge if you're a Mason and, and suggest the lodge do like a fundraising effort and send the money either to UGLE or Red Cross yourselves, you know. Uh, uh, there's, there's, and I think this was mentioned in the, the website, you know, there's lots of ways to support the people of Ukraine. Um, and, and it's, you know, good for every lodge to find out what they want to do and how they want to support the, the, the Grand Lodge. Obviously, it was also mentioned in the email, making sure you're careful, right? Because there can be scams out there. And, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that's why the Grand Lodge, UGLE, I'm assuming that's why they went with Red Cross, because it's one of those organizations that at least, you know, you know, it's legitimate. You know, the money's going where it's supposed to be going. Absolutely. British Red Cross is like beyond reproach and we can trust them to do 
their own due diligence to make sure the money gets to where it's meant to go. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, my, uh, I gotta say, my my pops is, uh, well, my grandfather was from Halt Whistle, which is very close to Newcastle. Okay. Um, my dad is from the same place, but he actually joined Freemasonry when he came to Canada. Um, oh, okay. But I gotta say, I don't know. I don't think I don't think I detect much of a a British accent on you. And you mentioned you're from the Canadian. You're on the Canadian Facebook page. Are you Canadian originally? No, I I went to university in Canada at a university that is now formerly known as Ryerson University. I believe they've changed their name to okay. something else. Um, but yeah, I, I studied at Ryerson for a few years. I'm from the states originally. Okay, because uh, well. I was wondering if you maybe, so did you join Freemasonry in, in England or did you join any lodges in Canada? No, uh, I joined in uh, England actually not too long ago, November, 2019. Okay. Well, just before, just before things got interesting. Just, uh, yeah, I got two thirds of the way through before uh, <laughs> the world shut down, but yeah, no, it was, uh, yeah, I managed to get a couple of degrees in before everything went topsy-turvy. Good, good. Well, I hope. And have you got your last degree done since? Yes. Uh, well, it was actually the first ceremony my lodge did after we UGLE gave us permission to come back in uh, July 2021. We had our first meeting in October 2021. Everyone planned the ceremony. They did a bunch of rehearsals, and then I got raised in November 21. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that, and thank you so much for taking the time and for all of your work and your efforts. Uh,